Hey guys, today we're going to Pontotoc County, Mississippi, and I'm going to introduce you to a Chickasaw Indian lady who was a pioneer in the women's rights movement. Her name is Betsy Allen. Come along with us. Let's go explore. Sometime during the 1780s, Elizabeth Love, also called Betsy, was born in the territory of the Chickasaws. Her father was Thomas Love and her mother was Sally Colbert. She owned many enslaved individuals. Sometime in 1797, Betsy married James Allen in a Chickasaw Indian ceremony. Together they had 11 children and they lived on the Love property in Chickasaw Territory, which was in and around Tocopola, Mississippi. In November of 1829, Betsy gave her minor daughter, Susan, a gift. Of course, this gift was one of her enslaved individuals named Tony. Betsy properly recorded the title according to the customs of the time. We've been looking around Tocopola, Mississippi at what is supposed to be Betsy's grave. What we know for sure is that the Love property was in and around this area. Betsy's husband became involved in a lawsuit and retained the services of a lawyer, John Fisher. When Allen failed to pay his fee, Fisher sued and obtained a default judgment against Allen for $200 in March of 1831 in the Circuit Court of Monroe County which would have been held in the courthouse that was adjacent to this old jail in Athens, Mississippi. The lawyer Fisher exercised a judgment against Allen to seize his personal property so it could be sold at auction to satisfy his debts. The sheriff seized the enslaved individual Tony because Tony was considered to be Mr. Allen's property under what was known as coverture, and Betty's conveyance to her daughter was ruled ineffective. George Allen sued on behalf of the family for trial of right of property, and the case was decided in their favor by jury verdict. The lawyer Fisher appealed to the High Court of Errors and Appeals in Mississippi. In Fisher v. Allen, the court held that under the customs of the Chickasaws, a husband acquired no right to the property belonging to a woman at the time of marriage. Property belonging to the wife under Chickasaw custom is not liable for the debts of the husband. Thus, they affirmed the trial court's ruling. In 1839, Mississippi Senator T.B.J. Hadley introduced a property rights bill basically arguing that if Chickasaws and Choctaws were exempt from coverture, then all Mississippi citizens should be exempt as well. The Fisher versus Allen case was definitely the impetus for this action. Mississippi became the first common law state to depart from the rule of coverture. The new statute stated that any married woman may become seized or possessed of any property, real or personal, by direct bequest, demise, gift, purchase, or distribution in her own name and as of her own property, provided the same does not come from her husband after coverture. Other states soon followed suit, and England itself even did away with common law rule with its own laws some years later. And just think, it was Betsy Allen's gift to her daughter Susan back in 1829 that started the ball rolling toward women having the right to own personal property separate from their husbands, even if that personal property was another individual. Seems like a pretty big turning point for the rights of women but I had never heard of this until I made my trip to Pontotoc County. Maybe because the idea of referring to another human being as personal property is so abhorrent in our society today. 
We hope you've enjoyed getting to know a little bit about Betsy Love Allen and the moment it became legal for women to own property separate from their husbands. Thank you.